Hello and welcome to Time Series Forecasting. In this video, I'm gonna continue my discussion of uh, evaluating uh, the regression models by looking at uh, the residuals. And uh, we were dealing with the multiple linear regression model and here we are regressing consumption. That is, we are using consumption as a dependent variable and we are regressing consumption on uh, these four explanatory variables and all these five variables are contained in this data set US change and I'm using this TSLM function and I'm saving my regression model to test the residuals all we have to do is pass this uh, saved uh, fitted model to this check residual function and it will give us everything that we need to test uh, the properties of uh, the residuals from uh, this multiple linear regression model. So let's look at uh, this output okay so the first thing is that the time plot shows some variation in the residual that changes over time normally what we want is that uh, the residuals should uh, show variation which is constant over time but here we see that uh, in the early 1970s and also in 1980s there was a lot of variation in the residuals that is there is a difference between our predicted value and uh, our fitted value which is much larger than uh, what we observed uh, during 1990s and 2000s. So it seems like uh, during this period of time from 1919 to 2000 there is not much variation in the residual as compared with uh, the earlier period of time. So there may be some heteroscedasticity which will make uh, the prediction interval that we will get uh, inaccurate. Uh, looking at the histogram we see that the residuals are skewed a little bit which may also affect the coverage probability of uh, the prediction interval. Now looking at um, the ACF or autocorrelation between uh, these residuals, there is a significant spike at lag uh, 7. Uh, apart from this spike, we do not see any other significant spike. Actually the value of the long box test is uh, 0.06 which is larger than 0.05 which means we fail to reject our null hypothesis at 5% and we conclude that uh, uh, there is no serial correlation in uh, other residuals. This model is uh, fitting uh, the data pretty well as shown by the long box test for uh, the regression model which in this case is Proish Godfrey test or LM test which is showing us that we are using all the available information in these uh, four variables to predict our consumption variable and uh, there is no serial correlation in uh, the residuals. So that's the first way of uh, looking at uh, these residuals. One thing more that we can do with uh, these residuals is we can plot these residuals against all the explanatory variables. That is we can uh, regress the model and then we can calculate the residuals and plot the residuals against all of uh, these uh, explanatory variables. That is, we can plot the residual against income, against production, against unemployment, against savings. And normally we do not want our residuals to show any type of relationship or any sort of pattern with any of uh, these explanatory variables. Again, if there is a pattern between uh, residuals and any of these variables, it will mean that we are not taking advantage of all the information. So let's go ahead and uh, change our data into a data frame. And then uh, I'm going to calculate uh, residuals from this model. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my first variable income on the x-axis and uh, residuals on the y-axis. And I'm going to do it uh, for each of these four variables and then I'm going to save all these as P1, P2 up to P4. Next I'm going to use this library grid range and I'm going to pass all these plots to this uh, uh, grid range function and uh, I'm going to plot uh, these four graphs in two rows. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, look at the results. So again residuals here are plotted on uh, the y-axis and 
our four variables income production savings and unemployment rate are plotted on uh, the x-axis and we can see that uh, the fitted line as well as uh, these uh, scatter plots are telling us that there is no apparent relationship uh, between uh, residuals and any of uh, these four variables and we can conclude that uh, our model is doing a pretty good job and there is no apparent pattern between uh, these uh, uh, variables finally we can also plot uh, the residuals against the fitted values and uh, we again want uh, no relationship between uh, fitted values and uh, the residuals i'm going to calculate the fitted values from uh, our regression model and then i'm going to calculate the residual from that model and then i'm going to plot those variables on uh, a graph and here we see that uh, residuals are plotted on the y-axis and the fitted value of consumption are plotted on uh, the x-axis and uh, looking at the scatter plot and this uh, regression line we see no apparent uh, pattern in uh, this scatter plot so again we conclude that uh, the relationship between residuals and fitted values is random and uh, there is no leftover information in the model so these are some of the ways that you can use to evaluate a regression model so normally we want our residuals to show homoscedasticity that is the time plot of the residuals should show variation which is constant across time we want these residuals to show a normal distribution and then we want uh, uh, these residuals to show no autocorrelation or serial correlation and uh, we can also plot uh, these residuals against all of our explanatory variables and our fitted values of the dependent variable and we don't want uh, these residuals to show relationship uh, with any of uh, those explanatory variables or the fitted values and if there is some sort of a relationship or a pattern then we may need to go back and uh, change our model and improve our predictions all right i'll see you in the next video bye bye